Hey there, welcome back to this week's episode of the Seatown Podcast, where Seattle business owners, entrepreneurs, and community leaders are invited on to share their stories with us. I'm your host, Christian Harris. This week's episode of the Seatown Podcast is brought to you by Seatown Real Estate. Their mission to make a difference extends beyond just their unique and unconventional approach with their clients and their agents. They partner with the community to give back a percentage of the proceeds from each home sale to a local nonprofit of their client's choice. Visit seatown.com, S E A town.com, and experience the difference with Seatown Real Estate today. Well, thank you for joining us for another episode of the Seatown Podcast. Today I'm sitting down with Kaylee Powers, who is the owner of Kaylee Elizabeth Photography. I appreciate you taking the time to uh, sit with me here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, so, talking a little bit before we started recording, um, you're, it sounds like you've been doing this for a number of years and you got started, uh, I don't know, it sounds like you got the entrepreneurial bug pretty early on. Uh, how, how old were you when you started your business? Started at 15 in high school. Okay. And what was the. Um, impetus for that just trying to make a little extra money or yeah uh well i'd been doing pictures for a while just for friends and on the side and then i actually had someone that wanted to pay me so that felt really good <laughs> and that's, that's what really got me yeah. started <laughs> it's always nice when they're willing to, to pay you some money for your work <laughs> definitely um now I mean, there's a lot of photographers in seattle what kind of makes you and your photography stand out what do you have like a, a niche or Yeah, I would say that my niche is definitely, um, aside from pictures, just excellent customer service and making it an experience and not just a product Mm -hmm. and really taking care of customers. And I'd say that my style stands out because it's really romantic and more about how the picture makes you feel and a memory versus just capturing people, kind of. Okay, okay. (laughs) Uh, Do you primarily do like... uh portraits or work with businesses or kind of a mixture or what what's what would you say the majority of businesses majority of the business is definitely families couples that really evokes a lot of emotion and kind of touches my passion for photography but there's definitely a small niche of businesses and local people I like to work with sure um, and then you know, maybe tell us a little bit more about uh, kind of some backstory about the business and about you uh, are you from Seattle you know how long you've been doing this um, what what are you kind of passionate about you know some of that kind of stuff yeah, I've been here for a really, let's see, been in Seattle, I feel like, to, since I was like seven, I think is right. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, definitely familiar with the area, love the feel of Seattle. It's definitely me. I'm definitely a Pacific Northwest girl. <laughs> um, yeah, I really started pursuing art when I was young, really like passionate about anything like painting, drawing. I just wasn't good at it. <laughs> and then I found photography because my parents gave me like a little point and shoot like Nikon camera when I was 13 and I just like could not put it down. Yeah. <laughs> and I still wasn't very good with it but over time just learned that it really combined two of my passions which is like people and something artsy and just kind of was self-taught and then when people actually wanted to start paying me for portraits I was like okay maybe I'm onto something here and I can do this sure Uh, are you able to kind of uh, keep yourself pretty pretty busy? You do this full time? Yeah, full time. I went okay. full time last year. I was working at a church full time mm-hmm. and was doing my business on the side, and then my business kind of outgrew my forty hour job. So I've been doing it full time for like okay. a year and a half. That's great. I always wonder. It seems like the photography world's pretty saturated here in Seattle. I always wonder if people are able to you know get enough work, enough clients. Um, yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. Have, do you have a lot of repeat uh, repeat clients? Lots of repeat families. Yeah, yeah, a lot of my families have stuck with me and. Like the very first session I ever did was senior portraits. And then six years later, I did that girl's wedding. Okay. So lots of cool things like that where, you know, sometimes it starts like you do someone's wedding and then, oh my goodness, they get pregnant and have a baby and then they need maternity sure. photos and, you know. <laughs> sure. Well, you're, you're definitely doing something right if they're, you know, thinking about you for the next photography need, you know, they, they call you again. So that's, that's great. <laughs> uh, when you either when you first started your business in high school or kind of when you went full time, what, what did you find to be the most uh, surprising or unexpected aspect of starting your own business? Ooh, anything to do with money. Like, <laughs> uh, definitely like all navigating the taxes, accounting, doing it like legally. That's a little bit intimidating, especially when like you're young and you sure. don't even manage a lot of your own personal finances. Managing business finances is all of a sudden like, oh my gosh, I could actually get in trouble for (laughs) not doing this right. That was really shocking. And then I think the other shocking thing was how solo everything is. Because when you go from, I was on a staff of about 40 people to all of a sudden you're just like you. You know, you can't exactly delegate things or be like, oh, I'll put it off till tomorrow (laughs) because no one else is going to do it. (laughs) Sure. 
Um, now, uh, you know, you mentioned you know some of the businesses that you do photography for, um, you know, Lika Love and Allaire. Um, you know, I, I know those gals and they have, you know, a, definitely a community aspect, you know, philanthropy, supporting community and stuff. Um, was that part of the reason you got involved with them? Uh, do you have kind of a, uh, I don't know, a, a back history, you know, of, of wanting to, you know, kind of give back and that sort of thing as far as an alignment of those businesses in yours? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Anything that empowers women. I love that Allaire does a lot of really great things for women entrepreneurs and same Malika is a total boss and has like three stores and <laughs> they do a lot of really good community work. And for me, I'm super passionate about just supporting other people. And part of the fun thing with photography is you make other people look their best and sure. be their best in a moment. And it's fun to do that with other businesses. Right. Uh, if you had it to do it over again, would you do anything differently? Oh my gosh, I would do <laughs> <laughs> so much differently. I definitely would have asked for help a lot more than I think I did at the beginning because you kind of get into the mentality of fake it till you make it. Sure. And sometimes that's not like the best way to go about things. Yeah. <laughs> um, definitely would have done that, reached out more for help, and then probably listened more. I think that when you're in the beginning stages of something, you tend to just want to like rely on you and let it be your thing and you don't want people touching it. But I think that there are so many, it's like your parents giving you advice where you're like, okay, yeah. sure, like whatever. And then years later, you're like, oh my gosh, my parents were right about everything. Like yeah. <laughs> I should have listened. So I definitely had mentors and teachers that looking back, I'm like, I should have just done this sooner. Like, <laughs> sure. Um, what, what would you say is the best advice you've ever received? Ooh, let's see. I'm really thankful to have received a lot of advice. I think, um, I think in the creative field, it's really easy to get super wrapped up in like your own style, your own way of doing things. And I think the best advice I've ever heard probably is from my dad, just reminding me never to forget where you come from. Sure. And just always being grateful that when I look at other people's work and tend to want to like critique or feel like I'm better or not think I need to improve or work hard. Just remembering back at that 15 year old self that, I mean, if you pull up one of my pictures from six years ago, I would be mortified and like burn it and like never want to admit I ever took it. Yeah. <laughs> so just staying humble and never forgetting where you came from and just being willing to help other people for where they're at and just knowing that you're never done growing as a creative and adapting to the needs of the market and everything. Sure. Um, would you say that there's a specific habit that contributes to your success that you're, you're seeing now? Yeah, I think the customer service piece, just like authentically caring about people, because I mean, you can go online in Seattle, you can go on Instagram and find a million photographers, but I really just want to make sure like on a bride's wedding day, like you're getting her water, you know her name, family's names like you're taking time to really cultivate a relationship and like I love knowing like my bride's favorite bands and like actually making a connection beyond providing a product and like providing an experience for sure, them sure uh speaking of you know like uh wedding photography what, what's again the scope of the photography you, you do I mean what are some of the different events oh. or whatever yeah yeah, I'd say the top couple things are definitely like weddings, families, high school seniors, and then like corporate event business type things. But I would say weddings are definitely what I've moved towards in the last year or two. And I definitely did not want to do that at first. I was okay. like, whoever does weddings, I'm like, they're crazy. Like that's so much time and so much work, but I love it. Okay. <laughs> uh, what, what, what changed that made you, you know, not want to do it to, to doing it now? Let's see. I grew up in a really big family. Like I have a million cousins. Life was always like loud, chaotic and fun. And that's kind of how weddings are. So for me, sure. it's kind of nostalgic, like navigating just like loud chaos. Sure. <laughs> so I think once I had done one or two, I was like totally hooked on doing them. Okay. Um, in your business uh, or, or in personal life, uh, do you have a specific like technology or life hack that, uh, that really helps you be successful or, or oh, organize things. Lightroom. Oh my goodness. I okay. kid you not. When I was like, I think I was like 18, I like used this online service. It's so embarrassing. It literally was called PhotoCat. Like, and it was like this online editing thing. And I thought it was like so cool. And it was basically like a 2004 version of like Instagram filters. Okay. <laughs> and then thankfully I had someone mention Lightroom to me and just didn't want to invest in it. I'm like, it's not worth the money. Like I have this free thing. And then with the second I did, I was like, I've been missing so much. So sure. Lightroom is a game changer. Sure. That's an <laughs> Adobe product? Adobe. Yeah. 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 And then do you listen to podcasts? I do. Yeah. One of my all time favorites is uh, Jenna Kutcher. Anything is amazing. Okay. And, what, and what's that about? 
She has some really good ones. Uh, like one of her series is called Gold Digger. And she just has a lot of really good uh, advice about, you know, navigating your own business, navigating life amidst it. And she just has a really good story to tell and just comes off really authentic in her podcasts. Okay. Uh, do you have a, a favorite book? Do you do much reading? Oh, love reading. Okay. Wish I had more time. Yep. Let's see. <laughs> oh, so much pressure to pick one. Um, I would say I actually like sitting down and doing like creative reading. So reading like biographies of people like love Oprah, love like Tyra Banks just came out with a book and like just love kind of female okay. <laughs> role models. Um, but I like sitting down and like creative reading too, like old stuff like Jane Eyre or like um, my favorite artist of all time is Vincent Van Gogh. And okay. he really inspired me to do art. And so just like reading his biographies and like thinking about art, like uh, how long ago people got creative and just kind of like going through people's creative processes kind of helps me get back into mine. Cause there are some days as a creative, you just don't even want to like think about sure. <laughs> editing or shooting and like, it's tiring. So when you like can relate to someone else, that's like 10 times better than you are feeling that way. It makes mm -hmm. you feel validated. Like, Oh, it's okay. If I'm exhausted from doing this or don't want to do this. Cause sure. I mean, people 10 times better than me feel that way. <laughs> sure. I'm, I'm well within the scope of normal, uh, Human yeah. emotion and yeah, experience. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Feel so, so crazy or alone. <laughs> um, do you do you have a favorite movie? Ooh, favorite movie. Oh man, these questions. I was gonna say the personal <laughs> ones are hard because I'm like <laughs> love a lot of movies. Um, let's see, Beauty and the Beast. Always been a favorite. Definitely was Belle a couple times growing up. <laughs> which which version? Like the, the oh the Disney? kids one. Wasn't a big fan of the live action one. I'm sorry, okay. Emma. So like the '90s Disney. '90s <laughs> <one>. Disney. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you could recommend just one book to our listeners, what would it be? Oh, I really like actually. Uh, I don't remember what the name of the book is. I'd have to look it up. But Bear Grylls mm -hmm. has a really really good book about just kind of like life that I remember thinking like he was someone like I didn't like his show that much but he had a couple cool things in his life that I think he wrote about that I liked his biography okay who else is the, he's the guy on Shark Tank Robert oh my gosh I should know his last name <laughs> one of the sharks like anyone on Shark Tank I love all of their Lori okay. Grenier is amazing sure. <laughs> Kevin O'Leary <laughs> sure. okay um, now, as we kind of wrap up the podcast, do you have any words of, of wisdom uh, to leave with our, our listeners? Oh, my goodness. Words of wisdom. Let's see. I think being 21, I think a lot of people in my age bracket or younger don't feel like they can get started doing something you're passionate about. Like there's an age limit on pursuing your dream or passion and there's definitely not. So yeah. I'd encourage you can start your business at 80 or eight. You can do. Sure. <laughs> there's no age requirement. Um and then I think just, yeah, latching onto people that are better than you and making sure that you always stay open to criticism, advice, people that just know better. Because I think something that is hard to do when you're young is to listen to people that are older than you. Sure, sure. <laughs> so just staying humble and working hard and just knowing that, you know, no one can take away what your niche is and just finding that and holding on to it versus trying to find a trend or, sure. you know, just do what everyone else is doing because that's boring. Sure. Did you find it... Uh challenging or find resistance you know being so young when you first started your business oh oh my gosh yeah there would be times where i would be on the phone with people and let them know that i was like 17 or 18 and they wouldn't call me back mm -hmm. <laughs> so i think something that's great about photography is you can hide behind your portfolio like as long as your pictures are good most people will sure pursue you but yeah that that was discouraging or um i definitely even had people that like being a woman they were like oh like can you carry the equipment can you do these things okay. and so that was a little bit you know when I, the younger me would be taking that so personally nowadays i'm like oh well like sure. <laughs> if you don't want to book me that's totally fine yeah. if it's based off that you know and i think too for just not finding an ex making that a, an excuse though because when i look at like my sister who mm -hmm. she's autistic mm -hmm love her so much and like she just reminds me like there's no excuse and if someone doesn't want to book you you know there's an audience for everyone and sure usually if people won't book you for your age or gender you probably don't want to work with them anyway sure they'd probably <laughs> be less than ideal clients so. exactly yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, that's that's great. Um, so as we close out, what's the best way for our listeners to find out more about you or your business or uh, to take a look at your, your portfolio to, to maybe book you for some uh, for a photo shoot? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, my Instagram is just, oh, my gosh, I should know my own Instagram. It's at KEP underscore photos. <laughs> and that has like a link to my website in the bio. And it's just my business name, KayleeElizabethPhotography.com. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for joining me, Kaylee. Uh, I'd encourage our listeners to go check out her website and her portfolio. Um, she does some great work and works with some, some great people in our community. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time and sitting down with me today. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> that wraps up this week's episode. Make sure to check out our guest website, pay them a visit, and help spread the word about what they are doing. If you have any questions, know someone who should be a guest on here or has a great story worth sharing, email me at christianharris at ctown.com. That's S-E-A-town.com. I would also love it if you would go to iTunes and give us a review and a nice five-star rating. We work hard to bring on great guests and provide exceptional content, and getting a review from you is one way to help the podcast rank well on iTunes so others can find and enjoy the show. You can also find out more about me, how my real estate brokerage is breaking the mold and making a difference in our Seattle communities, and other projects I'm working on by visiting ctown.com, S-E-A-town.com. Thanks for listening. The music for our podcast is courtesy of The Fascination Movement. You can find their albums in the iTunes store. You can also listen to more episodes and find all our show notes on our website at ctownpodcast.com. This has been a Seatown Media Production.